There are indications that the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and its allies, especially Russia, will further court our uh, oil supply by 500,000 barrels per day, a situation that would worsen economic realities in Nigeria. Uh, although OPEC and non-OPEC panel called the Joint Technical Committee, which is ending today, the cartel is planning to hold emergency ministerial meeting on February 14th. Bloomberg analyst says the coronavirus outbreak in China could court oil demands by more than 250,000 barrels per day in the first quarter. The proposed Nigeria's 2020 budget is predicated on 2.18 million barrels per day at a price of $57 per barrel. Business confidence in the economy dropped to 28.3 index points in January 2020. This represents a decline of 2.0 index points when compared to 30.3 index points in December 2019. The Central Bank of Nigeria disclosed this in its business expectations survey report. The business confidence index is a leading indicator of future developments in the country. The business outlook for this month, however, showed greater confidence in the economy with 61.4 index points. Macroeconomic strategies with uh, Afri-Invest West Africa, Adedai Bakari joins me now uh, via Skype to talk more on this. Adedai, it's great to see you. You couldn't get here because of the traffic. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, um, um, it would have taken a long time to get to the studio. So um, thanks for having me via this medium. All right, then let's start with these figures. How did it come to you? There's a drop of 2.0 index uh, points. This is worrisome in the start of a, of a new year. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, from um, last year, um, it was not such a strong end to the year. Um, you know, considering, you know, the... the different things that happened last year, both positive, you know, and negatives. Um, on a positive aspect, we saw, um, you know, a general moderation in interest rates, which is, you know, good for businesses. Um, we've seen very early in this year, um, a lot of businesses have, um, you know, they're expanding operations, they're taking more loans, um, the big corporates are issuing more bonds, you know, to take advantage of the low interest rate environment, which should um, support their earnings. But also, we know that there are several, you know, um, negative um, developments in the economy, which is still affecting, you know, the business environment. Um, we are aware, for instance, that, um, you know, inflation has been rising, and that's mainly due to the closure of land borders. So um, the um, Federal Executive Council was supposed to meet on it um, towards the end of January, uh, um, you know, to um, deliberate on wh whether it was going to be extended or opened. But from um, the way we see things now, it seems, you know, um, the border remains closed um, indefinitely. So um, obviously, when you think in terms of the confluence of these factors, um, you see that um, although you know the economy is expanding, although we expect improvement, and um, you know um, confidence is actually a bit weak. All right, uh, looking at some of these issues surrounding business confidence in this part of the world, uh, what are what are we not doing right? And of course, on the other hand, some are saying that the central bank is also, you know tightening the belt, particularly with regards to the bank, the banking sector. Yeah, absolutely, um, which is quite surprising, by the way. Um, our expectations going into um, the meeting, the first meeting of um, the CBN's um, Monetary Policy Committee in January was that um, they were going to hold, um, you know, steady, that is um, CRR at 22.5%, NPR at 13.5%, and liquidity ratio at 30%. Um, Surprisingly, we saw you know, a hike in CRR, which um, indicates that, that um, the bank is worried about you know, um, the excess liquidity in the banking system and wants to um, tighten. But again, um, when you consider, consider you know, the developments we've seen you know, over the past six months, where the um, CBN has tried to encourage banks to continue to lend, um, the bank even you know, established a minimum loan to deposit ratio of 60% before rising, raising it to um, 65 percent in Q4 2019. So um, it's a bit, you know, there are conflicting signals. On one hand, you want um, um, banks to, you know, um, loan more money to businesses and people. On the other hand, you are, you, are, you know, squeezing banks via um, CRR um, increase. 
So um, it's um, a bit conflicting, and um, that is why investors uh, uh, are being careful in terms of in reading, you know, what the CBN is really trying to do. And um, from, you know, um, since the meeting, we've seen, you know, a, a bit of stability and calm in the markets. Um, liquidity is still very, very strong, you know, in the, mar in the market, especially outside the banking sector, because, um, you know, um, there's very, very um, weak depth in the treasury bills market as well as in the bonds market. So obviously, um, a lot of these policies would send um, wrong signals to businesses and to investors. And that is why, you know, in terms of um, really evaluating the policy, policy choices of the bank um, currently and from, you know, what we've seen recently and what is likely going to happen, um, there's not a lot of confidence that um, this will be enough to actually um, deliver the boost to the economy needs. Before I let you go now, improving economic conditions uh, to attract investment, something that is very, very important at this time. You have the visa, the new visa policy and what was launched by the president yesterday, all in the aid on the basket of attracting help, looking for ways to attract investors. Uh, what are the quick wins as we move in 2020? It's not an election year. We need this money to come into the country. Uh, I'd like to know your views. What do, you, what do you think should be done? Okay, the quick wins. Um, the quick wins, um, the recently passed um, Finance Act is a good development. You know, um, um, the regulatory and business environment is um, being made more friendly for businesses, especially small businesses. We think that is a very, very big win um, going, going into 20, um, 20, 2020. Um, also, when you think in terms of um, the similar reforms the government is carrying out, um, you know, around you know um, taxes, generating more taxes. It's also a very good law development because government is actually cash strapped, so they need to actually um, raise more revenues to be able to expand um, um, public services. Um, on the downside, when you think in terms of you know the um, likely increase in electricity prices, when you think in terms of um, the land border closure, then you begin to get a sense that um, maybe just maybe we need to reconsider some of the choices we have. Um, the quick wins. Another quick win we see is of um, um, you know um, electricity subsidies is good it's going to support government earnings and hopefully um, you know make the sector a bit more bankable to you know investors that would um, boost capacity in the sector also when you think you think in terms of um, say the removal of subsidies for instance that costs Nigeria over a trillion naira every year and um, we believe that would also be a very very um, big win for the government um, removing it is not so difficult and by so doing government has more money you know to spend on infrastructure to spend on healthcare to spend on education. So for us, we think um, embracing, you know, business-friendly reforms, making the environment more conducive for businesses, and encouraging private investors to invest not just in, um, you know, um, um, roads, but also in transport infrastructure, also in pa um, power infrastructure as well, and liberalizing so, uh, most of these sectors uh, are ways the government can actually, you know, deliver um, very, very strong growth and um, economic development. All right, there are the Dio Bakari. Let's leave it at that. Microeconomic strategist, Afri Invest West Africa. Thank you very much.